Hello, Jim here for another episode of Without the Numbers, the video series where we take a look at a facet of Star Citizen using lore, flavor text, and the words of the developers themselves, because the numbers hate you and want to taste your sweet, sweet tears. So good. The subject this time around is ground vehicles. While you can technically fly any ship capable of making the transition from space to ground into any clearing, land, and explore to your heart's content, just like planes and helicopters in the real world, there will be places and times in Star Citizen where flying is not a smart move or landing is impossible. And the bigger your ship, the more likely you are to have a hard time scoring a parking space. Star Citizen planets are big. How big, you ask? Remember the Citizen Con demo from last year? If you pay attention to the distances of various objects in the HUD, you'll see that our intrepid explorer traveled a total of 7,681 meters, so nearly 8 kilometers, which is already farther than the distance between one edge of the Skyrim map and the other. And Star Citizen is likely to be much, much bigger than that. To put things in perspective, my brother and I once found a way to get out of the simulation boundary in Arena Commander. The first thing we did was head down to the surface of the old Vanderval racetrack. I wanted to see what was beyond the horizon, so I decided to travel to this city in my trusty Mustang Beta, the Betamax. By the time I was halfway there, I wished I'd taken a faster ship. It took me almost 10 minutes at 200 meters per second. That's about 450 miles or 720 kilometers per hour. If I'd been walking, the trip would have taken me more than 24 hours. Here is a quick clip of me flying through that city in real time. If it's this slow in a spaceship, I ain't walking, and you can't fly everywhere. So yeah, ground vehicles are important. But which ground vehicles should you own? They all have their own merits, but it's really your needs that should dictate your choices. So I'll be describing each vehicle, followed by the people who might want to own it. First, let's look at the Grey Cat Buggy. It's essentially a golf cart, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. Remember, golf carts were designed to go off-road, kinda, carry multiple people and fit in tight spaces for storage. So, the upsides of the Grey Cat include four-wheel drive, citation, all the wheels still move when I ram into the wall in my hangar, portability, it will fit in something as small as a freelancer dur, room for a passenger, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Downsides include exposure to the elements, and bullets, and lasers, and a complete lack of shields or weapons, and probably zero scanning capabilities. Well, still, it, you know, moves faster than a sprinting human, and you don't have to walk. Plus, stamina is a thing. Unless you're driving around a large hangar, I can only recommend the Grey Cat for anybody who doesn't want to spend extra on other, far superior vehicles. A dragonfly can currently do pretty much everything a Grey Cat can, but better. Next, there's the rovers. Rovers come in several varieties, including Ursa, Lynx, and Carrick support craft. The Lynx is paired with the luxury variant of the constellation, the Phoenix, so you can expect comfort, maybe some extra defenses, and a harshly worded letter from me if it doesn't come with a wet bar. The one that comes with the Carrick currently has no name or any information of any kind, but it's probably something like the Ursa with more equipment, potentially including improved scanning or mapping features. The Ursa, which comes with the exploration variant of the constellation, or the Aquila, or Aquila if you're British, is the only one we know anything about, so we'll talk about that, though you can expect follow-up videos on the others when information becomes available. The Ursa rover is an exploration vehicle. It's all-wheel drive, it has room for several seated passengers, there's a weapons rack for personal protection products, and space between the seats to allow for some extra gear. There's also a secondary entrance on the side of the vehicle, allowing you to stuff the back full of cargo, or forcing attackers to make a choice if they can only cover one exit. Unlike the Grey Cat, you can expect ship-scale weapons on the hull, and low-powered vehicle-scale shields, all in addition to a protective armor shell that will separate you from weapons fire and environmental hazards. And, once outside, even the broken-down hull of the Ursa is substantial enough to provide cover in an ambush. The only real downside is the speed, which is faster than a Grey Cat, but still nothing to write home about. This is a tough transport, and I can see it being used not just for exploration, but for limited cargo hauling in hostile environments, or even troop transport in hot zones. 
The Tumbril Cyclone, on the other hand, is a little less of a workhorse and a little more of a fun time buggy. While it comes in five flavors, all Cyclones have a few features in common. All variants have military armor, four-wheel drive, independent suspension for better handling, four-wheel steering for tighter turns, and jump jets for better stabilization in the air and softer landings, though not for actually jumping, as far as I know. Uh, there are also X-Tech tires, which operate just a bit like my favorite toy from the 1980s, the Animal. The treads open up on soft terrain and close on harder surfaces to provide maximum traction for the situation. Variants of the Cyclone include the RC, made for racing with a special intake that regenerates boost fuel for bursts of speed, and the TR, a turreted version that is topped with a human-operated ship-scale weapon with a 360-degree field of fire. The TR's gunner position also allows a third rider, something no other variant can manage, so technically this is also the best people carrier of the bunch. The RN is a reconnaissance variant, with better scanners, extra data storage for mapping, and the ability to place navigation beacons. And the AA has anti-aircraft features, including surface-to-air missiles and countermeasures ranging from standard chaff and flares to, potentially, more exotic charges like smoke grenades and EMP devices. Overall, any version of the Cyclone has a higher top speed, better acceleration, better traction, better handling, and better jump ability TM, than any other wheeled vehicle currently on the market. The assets of the variants are many, and the downsides include a general lack of weaponry. Aside from the TR and possibly smoke grenades on the AA, all Cyclones must depend on small arms wielded by the passenger for ground defense. And the field of fire will be limited to front and sides by the roof of the vehicle. This is a problem because they are pretty much always on the ground, so they will likely need defense from threats that you might find there on the ground. Also, like the Grey Cat, the Cyclone is open canopy. If you want to drive this buggy on an airless planetoid, you'd better bring some extra oxygen. Also, bring some armor for bullets and lasers, and maybe bring a nice sack lunch in case you come across a picnic spot. It's hard to recommend a single type of owner for all the variants, so let's just say that you should take the Cyclone's special characteristics into account just as much as the general purpose. If you want something relatively fast and maneuverable with some nice options, whatever those may be, and you don't mind a general lack of weaponry and cover, the Cyclone is for you. Finally, there are the hover bikes, the Dragonfly and the Nox. These vehicles occupy an interesting halfway point between spaceships and ground vehicles, Though open canopy, they can maneuver and fight in space with ship-class weapons. Though they are technically flying craft, in gravity, they can only hover on the ground. And they can't transition between those two states without help from a larger ship to carry them. Even so, they are technically land vessels and incredibly maneuverable in that state, so they're included here. Both hover bikes are faster than most wheeled vehicles, allowing them to leave all but the Cyclone RC, with its store of boost fuel, firmly in the dust and even the RC will fall behind when the race hits the water's edge because the hover bikes the hover so they can cross the water. Let's not even consider what a race would look like in space. Finally, both bikes are incredibly portable. You can carry these in more vehicles than any other vehicle, except maybe the Grey Cat. In general, the downside of the hover bikes is the size. They have less armor than any other vehicle, except maybe the Grey Cat, and they have less interior space than any other vehicle, again, except for the Grey Cat. And they're open to the atmosphere, like the Grey Cat. Why did I get a Grey Cat again? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, you won't be carrying three to five passengers on either of these bikes. Now, what sets the Dragonfly and Nox apart? First, the Nox. Built for racing, this is currently the fastest consumer land vehicle. It will accelerate faster and reach higher top speeds than any other vehicle in its class. And while the Nox is an open canopy craft, after the rider has taken position on the seat, armor plating extends to protect the occupant's head and shoulders from rear attacks. Riders on the Dragonfly have to rely on energy shielding, which is only partially effective against ballistic attacks, and personal armor, which is heavy, so you get tired and sweaty, and you have to take it off to go pee. Or not. Um, the extra armor on the Nox may not be much, but you'll be glad it's there when you're retreating from small arms fire. 
The dragonfly is less maneuverable than the nox. It's slower than the nox. It can't accelerate like the nox. So, why get the dragonfly? For starters, it might have a slight advantage over the Nox on rough terrain. Presumably this has something to do with ruggedness. For certain, it has an advantage over the Nox in storage area. The Dragonfly can carry about as much stuff as the Cargo Cyclone, though not in one place. The Dragonfly storage is spread across two saddlebags and a tie-down rack that doubles as a passenger seat. While you can probably carry about as many bags of, say, freeze-dried mice as a Cyclone, you won't be able to carry large items, like a classic 80s console television. If, on the other hand, you choose to strap a friend to the rear rack instead of, say, your friend's weight and desiccated mice, you will find that they are perfectly positioned to provide a steady stream of small arms fire at any vehicle driving or flying behind you. All in all, both hover bikes are for those who prize speed, maneuverability, versatility, and portability above niceties like armor, missiles, and oxygen. And this is the part for all the people who've already commented, uh, you forgot about the Origin Rover and the X1. Clearly you haven't done your research. Your credibility as a reviewer is at an end. Well, I did. Watch the whole video before you try to talk smack, scrub. Maybe you can change your comment real quick before the people who actually watch the video make fun of you. I'm not saying I advocate that behavior, just that I think it would be pretty funny. Anyway, I'd have put these in the proper place, but the research and audio for this was done about three weeks before the ships were announced, and the video was edited about an hour before. Putting this here saves me about three hours, so this is happening. <laughs> in fact, I'm super lazy, so you're getting an old video to watch while I talk. Anywho, here's the skinny. We don't know anything about the Origin rover or the X-1 open canopy thingy. The rover is probably a fancy Lynx, and the X-1 is probably a Dragonfly Nox knockoff. There is a partial picture of the white Ursa Lynx rover in the 600i, but I doubt that is what the Origin rover will look like. It's just a stand-in. Right now, the Origin rover and the X-1 are just names as far as I can tell. Okay, that's done. And that does it for ground vehicles for now. Always remember that Star Citizen is in development, so new vehicles will likely be created in the coming months and years. If you are from the future, and you don't see the new cargo variant of the all-terrain scout transport or whatever, it's not included here because it didn't exist when I made this video. Look in the description of this video for a link to it, or go to the Without the Numbers playlist on my channel and you should find it there. If you still don't find it, feel free to pester me in the comments on this video. Thanks very much to everybody for watching, commenting, and subscribing. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.